and it's having a hard time separating them. So what your brain sees is both those images together. So this is what we're going to make today. Now, what you need to make a thaumatrope is some markers, pencil crayons, crayons. Um, I'm going to use tape, and I'm going to use an old felt pen that's dead as my little spinny. Now, the one many of the thaumatropes you'll see on the internet actually have strings on the outside edges of the image, but I found them too cumbersome and they got tangled and stuff, so I'm using a stick. Any kind of stick would do, um, um, you know, something bigger than a toothpick, I guess, an old pencil crayon. You'll also need a pair of scissors and a piece of paper. So I'm going to take my piece of paper and remember I said you can use any kind of paper. I'm going to fold it in half. Okay, folding is a really important um, skill for kids to learn, so I'd really help focus on this part with your kids. It's using your fine motor schools, skills, it's spatial awareness, um, and it's a life skill. Everyone needs to know how to fold. So you might have to hold this paper for your child and get them to carefully line up the edges. A lot of kids are still folding like this, and then I have to go and I sit with them and I hold it, and then they're able to create a perfect rectangle. Now from here what I'm going to do is those folds, I'm just going to cut them off to make the two pieces of paper that I need to create my thaumatrope. So I actually have four pieces of paper and that means you could make two thaumatropes. Now I have cut these a little bit smaller, not much, but a little bit smaller than this one because it's not hard um, paper, it's computer paper or line paper. You could use construction paper um, that's a little stronger and doesn't flip as much. Um, so I made them a little bit smaller. We're actually going to make a different thaumatrope than that one because I've been using it a lot. We're going to create a fish in a fish bowl. So the key to a thaumatrope is really just creating two images. So if you have your whole image of a fish in a fish bowl, on one side you need to draw the bowl. Okay, so this is the setting. This is where the action takes place. Okay, any kind of bowl will do. Oop, lost my blue. Oh well, I'll make purple then. So we got purple water. And I'm going to color it in. So the water is down at the bottom of the bowl. And it's not perfect, but it's mine. And really, your water could be any color. It's not going to make any difference. It just makes a nice, clear, crisp, crisp background for your fish. So there's my fish bowl. And that's what it looked like earlier when I made this one. Now I'm going to get my other piece of paper and I'm going to draw a fish. And most of us have drawn fishes through directed drawing. You can draw any kind of fresh fish you like. And you want the fish to be sitting in line with the water in your fish bowl. I mean, if you drew the fish up here, I guess it would be a flying fish in your fish bowl. But I want my fish today to fit inside that bowl. So I'm going to draw a tail, big kissing lips, an eyeball, some gills, a couple fins, and some water bubbles. Nothing too fancy. And I'm going to color my fishy. When you color over black Sharpie, it is not waterproof, so it will blend and turn your pink a little bit gray. So if you don't want that to happen, um, this isn't a, the black is not a Sharpie, then use a Sharpie and your colors won't blend. It still looks good though. Just wondering where my blue felt went. In. So I'm going to give my fishy some orange lips. How about a yellow eyeball? And because we know the water that I created was purple, I'm going to make purple air bubbles. There's my fish. 
Now, as you go, you can certainly add things. Um, seaweed. I know it's a fish bowl. It may not have seaweed, but it will go in there just fine if you want to do stuff like that. Okay, so from here, the last thing we need to do is attach these two pieces of paper to your stick. And I am going to use tape. This one I used a glue gun, so it's pretty easy, but you need parents to help. Um, so I'm going to take a piece of tape. Oops. Hey, Gemma, can you grab me some more scotch tape, please? Yeah. That was my last piece. So the key to, oh, we got dog hair. Oh, I love working from home. Is we don't want the tape to touch, but we do want the tape to wrap around whatever post you're using. So that, thank you, Gem. That's yeah. my daughter, Gemma. So that is attached. Um, so you want it to go around the post and then kind of attached near the middle of your picture. Now, if you see, there is a little bit of air in between, which means this could fall out. Okay, so um, use multiple pieces of tape. So I kind of wrap it around the post as much as I can before I attach it. Oops, and that one crinkled my paper. That's all right. So you kind of really want that one attached. Now this one doesn't have to be attached to that. It just needs to be attached to the paper. So I'm going to get a piece of paper and we're going to roll tape. Another life skill, I, when I'm teaching my regular classroom, one of the very first things I teach kids is how to roll tape. So you got the sticky part on the outside and you're going to roll until the sticky is all the way around and then put it down. And you don't want to make it too small. Sometimes kids make really tiny rolls and then the tape just won't stick. And some kids get frustrated and do that. Get your dad, Jim. So that won't work. So we just get some rolly tape. So four, four or five. And then you're going to take your water and put it on this side of your thomatrope. So now I have two images. Now I didn't leave myself that much space on my stick, so maybe next time I would move my stick down a little bit lower. But now all you gotta do is roll. And <laughs> because I didn't leave myself that much room, it's a little bit harder. But can you see how the fish looks like? It's in the bowl of water. And that's your retina, not being able to keep up with all the images that are flashing through your eyeball. So kind of a cool thing. This one was the sticks a little bit longer, so it's a little bit easier to work. And you can see how those images blend. It's so cool. This is another one I did. I wanted to do a vehicle traveling on a road. And so on one side I drove the, drove the car and on the other side the setting where the car is supposed to be. It was a little bit bigger, a little bit more cumbersome, but did it work? I think it works. You just have to get used to rolling it. So there's thaumatropes. They're very cool. They're very fun. If you want to start with something that might be a little bit easier, then just do two words, bulldogs. And then on this one, rock. You might decorate, decorate, and then when you've attached them, it will become one sentence. So science and art, they are so closely linked together. Um, that was a bit of a cumbersome video, but I um, hope you get busy and start creating um, all the thaumatropes that you want, because it's a pretty cool way to create animation. Woohoo! Thank you for watching, everybody. I'll be posting more videos um, for you to work on. And um, I hope everyone's being safe. And we'll see you later, alligators.